Well, Lisa, I don't know about you, but every time I cross the Chesapeake uh, Bay Bridge or I take the ferry over to see my grandma in Cape May, I'm amazed by how much wa water surrounds Delmarva. Yeah, it really makes it a unique place. We have the Chesapeake Bay and the Delaware Bay, which you cross, and we can thank them for that. But there are other bays that are just as special. As a matter of fact, the eastern shore of Maryland alone has five coastal bays behind Ocean City and Assateague. That is why the Maryland Coastal Bays program is so important. In fact, it's a Delmarva treasure. For Roman Jeshin of Maryland Coastal Bays, it doesn't get any better than this. A trip out on the water, he and his organization is charged to protect. And that protection comes in many forms preservation, restoration activities, outreach, education, um, small projects such as tree plantings or living shoreline projects to larger projects that uh, incorporate um, uh, a lot of other um, uh, agencies. And at any given time, Maryland Coastal Bays has a variety of those projects going on. We work with schools. Uh, we just had a big tree planting. 60 acres of um, uh, pine plantation were clear cut and restored to uh, native forest. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had over uh, almost 350 students involved planting trees. Another project turned the old Ocean City dump into a public kayak launch. So this was a way of uh, providing access to the public, uh, cleaned up the area that uh, they would be using, and now it's a, it's a really nice kayak launch that's uh, on a small creek and in, in some of the bay in one of the bays so um, that's kind of the, the way that, that we operate other projects help manage and preserve natural habitats like the terrapin count uh, it seems kind of a silly thing to do but it's been related in scientific literature that the number of during a, a, the springtime that the number of turtle heads that you see are, are very closely related to the population size so we can monitor the uh, population of terrapin, uh, diamondback terrapins in the area um, with a really fun type of thing to do. So you drive around the coastline and, and count turtle heads. Um, and if you have enough data over a period of time, uh, if you don't see any turtle heads, you know there's there something going on with the terrapins. We have to find out what's going on with that. One of the more recent habitat projects can be seen in the Assawoman Bay behind Ocean City. This area is a really vitally important to uh, birds, uh, especially the birds that require uh, specific habitat to lay their, their, to make their nests and lay their eggs. And these are bare ground nesting birds, so they just typically just dig a little uh, pit in the sand and lay their eggs. And so that becomes very vulnerable to uh, a lot of predators. That's why island habitats have been created in the coastal bays, giving these birds a place to nest that don't leave them vulnerable to predators. The islands were created by dredged sand that had to be removed after Hurricane Sandy and are critical habitat for state endangered black skimmers, royal terns, and common terns. They have to nest on bare ground or uh, bare sand. Uh, they have a, they uh, make a little depression in the sand and they lay their egg right there. They maybe put some sticks around there, uh, but that's about it. Jeshin says to sustain these habitats, the island can't be too high because vegetation will grow on it. If it's too low, the nest will be destroyed by rising water. But it's not just Mother Nature and predators who endanger these habitats. It's people, too. There's signs all over the place. Yeah, what? Believe it, believe it says restricted. The police have been called. Although the islands are accessible to the public to recreate on, they are restricted during the critical nesting times, which happens to be during the peak boating months. What happens a lot of times is people will tie up. Um, they'll let their dogs run around, which can be devastating to these birds. Public education programs are being held in conjunction with several other organizations. We're working with um, uh, Autobahn, uh, DC Autobahn. Um, this year they've had a, a really interesting program where they've gone to schools. Uh, this is with Coast Kids. Uh, this is another organization in the coastal bays. Um, kids have made posters of, uh, you know, their drawings of birds to, uh, uh, don't, uh, don't tread on my island, save the birds. Still, Jeshin says it hasn't been easy. Just last summer, boaters took over one of the islands before it was completed. This year, uh, the, the birds are using it, and we put restricted signs on it, and we're asking the public not to uh, not to use it. There's other areas that, other beaches that, you know, are in the area that folks can use. 
Magician says he's proud of the progress Maryland Coastal Bays has made over the past 30 years, but says there's plenty more to do. We can do a lot of things. We can say a lot of things that uh, perhaps agencies can't. Um, uh, we can um, uh, bring parties together that uh, perhaps other, other uh, agencies can't. Um, we've got a source of funding that's in the area that we can um, put where it's needed as opposed to somebody in Washington, D.C. saying, you need this money for such and such thing, you know, and no, no we don't. So, you know, we can be the eyes and ears for a whole host of, of, of agencies and folks that uh, really can target um, uh, restoration activities in, in an area like this. So you may be asking, why do we need to make these islands? After all, birds have been nesting in islands for thousands of years. Well, Dr. Jeshin says bulkheads that have been built up on the coast of the bays actually change the way the water and sand naturally flows, and that flow is what builds these islands naturally. So man intervened a long time ago, and, and so they don't have these nesting areas. I wonder if, like, the boaters that you had to kick off the island, like, they understand why. I think they, I think they understand why. They weren't happy about it at the time, but if you think about it, these are endangered birds, and to put it into perspective, the American eagle, the bald eagle, yeah. was once endangered, and they put in all these protections, and now they're coming back and thriving. So just think of it that way. Yeah. And it's not year-round. It's just a couple months in the yeah. summertime. It's you very know. important. It is very, very important.